There is a serial killer loose. He got off on a technicality. This happened last week. You might not have seen it in the papers or noticed it. I searched it online and it said it was March 31st in the trip and I flipped through and I couldn't even find it in the actual trip. The serial killer. The FDA was approached 30 years ago, three years ago. They finally met last week based on a petition to remove artificial coloring in your food. Food has quadrupled the amount of artificial coloring that we're consuming. And that is colorings that are derived from petroleum. They serve no benefit, nutritional, longevity. They're simply a ploy to market more food. It makes it more colorful. 30 years, Feingold did a study that said children who eat artificial colorings or drink, it's in a lot of liquid drinks, have increased worsened symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This study has been repeated. England has put warnings on all of their food for artificial coloring. Over the years, the FDA has banned different colorings because they have been shown to produce liver problems or lung problems or are cancer producing. But my big problem isn't so much the food additives, it's the overall government cover-up. Their excuses, their technicality. When the food coloring was brought to the FDA's attention, they said, this produces worsening symptoms in children with ADHD. They have study after study that says it. Well, the FDA said, oh, this doesn't cause ADHD. Therefore, it's safe because 90% of the population doesn't have ADHD. They never said it caused ADHD. They didn't say it affected everyone. It makes the symptoms in children that do have it worse. 10% of children have ADHD. Now, what is ADHD? The symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are distractibility, impulsivity, hyperactiveness. Now, the impulsivity, when somebody with ADHD eats their Fruit Loops, what happens is they don't have impulse control. So they go out on the playground, somebody hits a ball, they run out into traffic, boom, hit by a car. Serial killer. The distractibility, it's really more of executive fun function, thinking ahead. A normal child has been told a hundred times, look both ways before going out in the street. They know that. Well, the kid with ADD, they get distracted. And they're looking at the ball and not thinking ahead to, I'm supposed to look both ways. Basically, what food coloring does is make you stupid. You don't think ahead. Now, it's been shown this is real in kids with ADHD. But because food coloring has quadrupled, and so has the increase of autism, it's Autism Awareness Month. So has the increase in ADHD. So has the increase in asthma and all these other things. Alzheimer's. My question is, the next time you get one of those senior moments where you just can't think, well, maybe it's because your brain is full of petroleum from your food coloring. So, 
one of my objections is that there's a term in the government called generally recognized as safe, G-R-A-S. Now the rules of generally recognized as safe is they have to convene a panel that says this hasn't killed anyone. And they give them this ability to say, okay, you can do this because it hasn't killed anyone beyond all reasonable doubt. Well, in the laws, if you're in civil court, you just have to show a preponderance of evidence. And they're saying, no, it has to be beyond all reasonable doubt. Well, if it's beyond all reasonable doubt, then why shouldn't the felony connection apply as well? That if you're committing a felony and somebody gets killed, even though you didn't intend to kill them, that's considered murder. So they can go the strict route and call this murder, or they can say, hey, we know it's not really good for you, let's cut it out. Because it serves no purpose to have the food coloring other than as a marketing ploy. So, what can you do? Vote with your wallet, your fork, and your spoon. Read the labels. If it has yellow number whatever or red number whatever, don't buy it. There are perfectly good substitutes that use raspberries, blueberries, nice natural colors that actually add some value to your product. Oh, maybe it's not as bright as this, but I'm sorry, blueberries and raspberries are a lot brighter than this. So please, vote with your forks and your wallets. Questions? You mentioned that the, the study also extended to things like Alzheimer's and uh, is there any place where I can go and look for that? Actually, the study itself on the food additives did not specifically apply to others. They just did the study on ADHD. There have been elimination diets and improved eating habits, such as eating blueberries, increases your mental ability. So the actual studies comparing uh, food dyes to Alzheimer does not exist. Comparing diet to Alzheimer's does. Yes? Do you think people have enough information to make, make their own choices about what they eat? Don't you think people know that cereal is unhealthy, or do you think the FDA encourages them to actually eat this? That is an excellent question. And one of my complaints is that they have labeling saying contains peanuts. Well, everyone knows that some people are allergic to peanuts, you get anaphylactic shock and you die. What I don't think they have the information about is the correlation of being stupid and doing stupid things that could injure you. I don't think the public has that information. Only 1%, less than 1% of the population is allergic to peanuts. And they put it on products all the time, contains peanuts, warning. Why not put a warning that this can make you stupid that applies to 10%, 10 times as many people. And they wanted the FDA to remove the colorings because they had no benefit, but they would have been happy with a warning. And the FDA said, oh, there's no proof and therefore they're not doing anything. And that's why you didn't see it in the paper. The news was prior to their decision. Afterwards, not a word. Other questions? Are you gonna vote with your fork? What is the, has there been any research that you're aware of on the whole appeal? I guess what my question is, you hear a lot of, but the kids want it, and the, and the parents have a hard time saying no. So how do the parents 
make the transition from something that the kids might want that tastes good to something that's healthy and better for them? They're children. They're eating things to make them stupid. Unfortunately, the parents are probably eating things to make them stupid. You need to educate them. You need to be a parent and let them know, hey, look at how beautiful and colorful these strawberries and blueberries are. And that actually is more, I think, a cost aspect. Parents are like, well, this is easy and cheap. Well, expensive is medical bills and everything else. So by educating the child, giving them good choices, and having yogurt with strawberries and blueberries, that they might not want this if they this if they don't know it's available, and if you let them know that it's not good for them. Would you let children just eat uh, Fruity Pebble vitamins all the time? It could kill them. This can kill them too. So you want to have that as an aspect in education and learning. Uh, there was something else you mentioned that I wanted to bring up about that. Can you repeat your question? Well, <laughs> See, I had some. <laughs> about the appeal. Like the appeal. So what they said was we need to do more research. It took them three, four years just to get to that point, and there's been research since the 70s. So that's where I say it's a cover-up. It's the lobbyists. The, there were both pros and cons there. The food companies are making money by selling this to your kids. And if your kids wanted Fruit Loops to put tracking systems in them so they could tell what exactly they're eating, would you like that? You know, oh, the kid says, yeah, but I can look up online what I'm eating, and so can everyone else. Would you let your child eat a microchip? Because the marketing company said, hey, it's fun. So again, vote with your fork. Thank you.